Today we're talking about slope factors of a metal roof. What's up guys, welcome back to Standing Seam Metal Roof Design Series here on the Metal Roofing Channel. Jeff and Lori back, thanks again for being here guys. We're talking about slope factors of a standing seam metal roof system. There's a lot of different things that can um, affect a roof's design and slope is one of them. So let's first define what a low slope is and what a steep slope is according to us here at Sheffield. slope versus low slope, you have two different terms. You have hydrostatic and hydrokinetic. A hydrostatic or water holding roof is going to be a 212 or less. A hydrokinetic or water shedding roof is going to be anything above a 212. A hydrostatic roof is inherently low slope. It's going to be anything below a 212 pitch. Water does get off the panels, but it gets off a lot slower and it does shed the water as fast as a steeper slope or hydrokinetic roof system. We do have a great hydrostatic, hydrokinetic Q&A. We go into detail about this topic, so be sure to check that out. But tell me a little bit about how this relates to a roof system specifically. What kind of panels are you gonna be using? What kind of components? How's the installation different with a hydrostatic versus hydrokinetic? The two main panels that we work with are mechanically seen panels and snap lock panels. Uh, mechanically seamed is going to have a 180 degree seam. Snap lock panels is going to do just what it says. It's going to snap lock together. So depending on which type roof system you have, either hydrostatic or hydrokinetic, low slope, steep slope, it's going to depend on which panel profiles are available for your roof system. And a hydrokinetic system, either one would work, mechanical or snap lock. In a hydrostatic system, you're going to want to go with a mechanically seamed panel. There's different testing standards that are available based on the slope of your roof. Basically, with a hydrostatic system, we do a test that's called ASTM E2140. It's hydrostatic head water, head pressure test, and they basically submerge the panel system under six inches of water and make sure nothing is able to leak through the panels. Uh, that's usually accomplished with sealing of the seams. With a snap lock panel, as you can imagine, when not having that double fold, you're not going to be able to pass that test. That test is good for slopes down to a half 12. Again, it's all based on roof design, what you have going on. Uh, but in areas that get heavy rain or you get a, a dramatic weather event, those seams can get overrun depending on the height of the seam and water can infiltrate your system if you don't have a mechanically seamed system okay. with sealant and seams. Right. Another thing to consider too, when you're looking at a panel for your home or your building is you might have a hydrokinetic and a hydrostatic system together on one roof. So one panel might not work, the same panel might not work for all areas of your roof system. You can break it up, you know, especially if you're going, you know, say with a, you know, an inch and a half snap lock system on the steeper portions and an inch and a half mechanical system on the lower portions, your seam heights are about the same. Okay. Um, so it won't affect the look that much. Um, depending on your elevation on a lower slope, you might not be able to see right. it from the ground. Um, and I'll say too that when it comes to snap lock panels, most of the industry, and depending on which panels you use with Sheffield, you don't want to go below a 312. Some of the panels we have rated are, are rated to go down below a 312, but not lower than a two when it comes to snap lock panels. Okay. Certain panels um, that are snap lock, say the one inch fastener flange, that's a 312 or above period. Sheffield Metals and the project design. Uh, we are here to lend to you our design assistance and our experience. So call us in on an early stage, an early phase. We're gonna typically look at the what you have for drawings at that point. Um, and we might call out areas such as where you're building an internal gutter. Um, where a high roof is dumping on to a lower roof. Areas where you have an exceptionally long run of panels at a very low slope, such as anything below a 212. 
we're going to ask about the considerations that went into that design. What was the intent of that? A steep slope pitching inward. Um, anything that's going against where we believe the, the roof design should naturally take you. So what kind of challenges can occur, you know, maybe if uh, a architectural professional like yourself when, if, with a manufacturer isn't brought in that early stage um, and perhaps like a roof design um, may not work so well? What, what are some challenges that can happen? Well, the, the, bil- the biggest challenge would be um, the time that's elapsed uh, over that period and the, the efforts that have gone into that because we probably will all offer an alternative design and move you away from that. If there was a, such a low pitch that we're not comfortable with, we're gonna ask for the consideration to put some pitch into that. So it could be some major work. It's so much easier to just call us on in early on and let us work with you on that. A couple of things I'll add just with that. You know, it's easier to change things in the design phase than after it's already been built or yeah. you know, contract documents have been set out. And you always want to make sure that water has a way to get off the roof properly, you know, so it's not backing up and you're not stopping water flow. Yeah, I think that's a great way to wrap up this episode. Um, Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with the next episode in the series of Standing Seam Metal Roof Design. Thanks again, Jeff and Lori. We'll see you next time. I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Metals.